Ladies, please give a big welcome round of applause for Phyllis and Lamont, the cookie ladies. about a previous girls' night out. Partway through the program, we heard over in this corner, we heard this rustle, 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 and we heard some whispering. We don't have to talk to each other. We just thought, we're losing them. So what we did was we picked it up, and we got kept going, and we got really excited to pull them back, and we thought we had it. And at the end, women were coming out and saying, oh, you're so wonderful, that's so good what you did, it's great. And one woman came up and said, you are so professional. When that woman passed out, <laughs> and, and the ambulance came, and they wheeled her across the back in front of you, you just kept on going. <laughs> and I said, what woman? And we said, sure. <laughs> so every day is about a quarter of a So And then you'll be able to look and see how much you got. And I have a quarter of a cup. So then, it's amazing. How do you do that? And then you put a quarter of a cup of the evaporated milk. And that makes a half a cup. So, <laughs> so, we had boyfriends, I have to tell you. Once. I said had. <laughs> we had boyfriends. And then we got oh. into the restaurant. Well, yes. And, and what we did, again, back in St. Jacob's, is this cute little hotel downtown. So every Friday night, the boys would arrive, and we would have them sweep and mop and do the dishes and do the <laughs> never been in the marching band. Do you know how the, the marchers go when they turn a circle, but the inside one goes like this and the outside one goes like that? Well, that's what you do with this. It's a marching band. <laughs> did, did she tell you to chop the prunes first? I didn't know. I didn't mention that, did I? You <laughs> chop the prunes first. <laughs> because if you put the big prunes in like that, you know, it's always <laughs> And what you end up with is this lovely little tight end of the marching band, and this is the big end, and it comes into the cold. So every time we went under a motor pass, we both died. Because we thought we were up so long, and we were so long. And she decided one day, because we were going on television, that she really thought that I should start coloring my hair. That really hurt me, but I decided that she must know something I don't know. So we did. So now Phyllis is a color expert. <laughs> and so once a month, or once every month and a half, rather than just trim my hair, now she's coloring it too. And you may notice that she has the elbow crease in her forehead because it was not a fun thing to do. <laughs> we made so many color mistakes. Uh -oh. Did you tell me that too much? We made. We made. We made. <laughs> I want to tell you something at this point. <laughs> Don't let me forget where I am. Right? We we did, and the thing that's going to be we did a cross Canada tour for charity. We did 30 events, and in the 30 events, my mic did not work for 29 of them. <laughs> so this is poetic justice. I got to do all. So those are you know, sure to become quite good at this, but every now and then it would be beige instead of blonde, or it would be too dark, and I would get upset, and we'd have these little battles. And so we went to the drugstore one day, and she found a box, and I do believe it said ash or something in the color. So she spoke to the lady behind the counter, and because Phyllis is very nervous about doing my hair, it's a very difficult thing, and she never knows how I'm going to react. And she asked the lady, Nelly, I'm really only 30 years old. <laughs> Oh, the bad guys come. What are we going to do to make sure the bad guys don't get us? So we bought a big dog dish that said Brutus on it. <laughs> and we bought a chain and we attached it outside to the dog dish. And then we bore a size 22 boots with steel toes on them and we set them outside the door. 
and we thought if anybody messes with us, they have to deal with Brutus and the guy that wears those boots. And he put some damsels in distress. We were driving down I-10, we were driving along in Mississippi, and suddenly the whole back of the motor home just went right down on its wheels. What we did was we and we called the people where we bought it from. We said, can you tell us our motor home just went right down and it's like that sat right down the back and said, oh, I know what that is. That is the little little thing that has to go up in the air and a little nipple. You put that there and the air will blow up and your motorhome will rise up again. You know, all you have to do is crawl underneath the back of the motorhome oh. and do this. And we said, well, we stop, stop the motorhome. And we thought, okay, let's get our coveralls on and get under here. I was so excited about getting my coveralls on. We had them in the motorhome for 10 years and we hadn't used them yet. <laughs> I was ready. I was rolling up my sleeves. I was ready. And just as, she, just as she was going to do that, I looked down at the end of the exit, and there were guys down there, and they were they were fixing something. And I said, Mama, look, look, look at that. You go down there. You go. You go. And you, you asked them if they'll come and help us. So she went off. And they came back from their truck, and they parked their truck. And we knew they were. Yeah, she sent me off. We had no idea what those men were like. <laughs> and suddenly our motor home started to roll towards us and we all went <laughs> so Lamont and the two guys are trying to hold the motor home back and you I, I didn't know I could move so fast I went flying up those stairs into the motor home without touching the step. <laughs> and I grabbed that exhaust brake and I went, like, and it stopped. And but I couldn't stand up because my knees were gone. And, and so so it would have been awful if you killed me. The two guys. The two guys were so early that they were gonna crush their truck. <laughs> Nobody helped us for thinking that they might hurt us. Are you ready for hors d'oeuvres? Yeah.